Hey, this is Burnt Wood Workshop, and I'm Al, and today we're going to cover sublimation onto wood. And I've been gone for a while, and getting back to it, we're going to start trying to get a video up a week. And what we did here was a couple different ways of sublimating on wood with the laser. We're using the X-Tool S1, and in my future videos, I'm also going to be using the M1 Ultra, which I have. So that's some other stuff we're going to be doing in the future. But what we started out with... As I started sublimating on the wood with polycrylic, it was one of the techniques I learned. And what we would do is we would paint the wood, polycrylic it, and then we'd do the sublimation onto it. And then after that, I'd have to polycrylic it again. So this is one of my early examples of done with the polycrylic. And this is a dice tower design that I came up with. With a tray something we can do in the future if you're in the comments say if you're interested in that so first one we did we tried to do it with the polycrylic and basically it was an epic fail i don't know why all the other ones worked but this was an epic fail and then we tried it again and it was an epic fail so what we did was we redid it and we did it a different way and that's what we're going to go over is the way we did it on here. You can see the gloss and then the clarity of the image. This way is the best way. So what we do is we can take a piece of wood and you can do the piece of wood plain and you can sublimate right onto the wood. And what we're using is we're using lamination paper. And I'll go into the details on that. But this is a lamination paper one done directly in wood. That's just directly on a piece of wood with lamination paper. This one here was painted and then done in lamination paper. And then afterwards I laser engraved that in it and cut it out with the laser. And then we decided to go crazy and we did this one. And this is on plain wood with the lamination paper and then sublimation. And that's just gonna be a cool picture frame. So that's one of the things we did. This is another one that I did with the polycrylic. I painted it, I coated it with polycrylic, I put the sublimation on it, and then I polycrylic it again to get this gloss. But by doing it with the lamination paper, as you can see, you don't, you don't have to do anything afterwards. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video. And I hope it helps you. So we sanded it down with 240 just to give it a little bit of a, hopefully a little bit of a bite so the paint sticks a little better. And I probably could prime it, but all the ones I did previously, I never primed. So I don't know why this one gave up other than that one had sat for quite a while, like a couple of months before I actually used it. Normally I prep these up and paint them and polycrylic them all within a day or two. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna just roll this out nice. I'm using a nice foam roller. And then once we get a good coverage, we'll smooth it out. Get it looking good. We've got a couple of pieces of dust in there. Once that dries, we'll give it a nice quick sand and we'll give it another coat. And that'll take all the dust off and everything. Okay. That's it. This is the... So what we did was we painted this board white. And what we're going to do is have the machine tell us it's up to temp. That didn't help. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to, we painted our board white. We're going to take our laminated sheet and we're going to put the dull side down. So the dull side goes down just like that. And we're going to use our heat tape. And we had a little blistering on the plywood, which so we're going to use the other side of it just so we don't get that in our final product. Take that into place. We're going to stick that in the heat press like that. Parchment paper over it. And then what we're going to do is we've got our machine set for not too much pressure. We've got a light pressure. We've got it set for 
380 on the low temperature, 385 on the high temperature, and it's going to go in for 12 seconds. And there we go. And there's our first step right there, which is our laminated sheet stuck down to our plywood. I'm just going to peel that tape off. And then from here, we're going to go to the laser and we're going to cut our pieces out and then we'll put our sublimation onto that. I got a little ahead of myself, but what we did was we ran these all, cut them all out with the X-Tool S1. For our sublimation, we're running our A-Sub sublimation paper and we're running an Epson ET2800 and that has to get filled with sublimation ink. So you basically fill it when you get it with sublimation ink. And this is our, the print doesn't look like it's gonna look when it's finished. It'll look better once you print it out, but that's our image. So we're gonna go up and run that off. When you're building this, you wanna make sure that you have the, the top with the top or the bottom, which that's the bottom. We actually want the flat and the notches on the top. Make sure you do that before you stick your stuff on, otherwise you're going to end up with an upside down image, which I have also done in the past. <laughs> it doesn't look quite as good when it's upside down. And we made these actually a little bit large, and I probably should have made them a little, maybe make them a little bit smaller next time, but I think they'll look fine. The only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to go too small, because then you end up with white edges around and that stands out bad. So you definitely want to have it a little bit bigger is better. Alright, and then we just gotta tape all these up and run them through. Okay, so once our laminate sheet is laminated onto the board, then we have to put our sublimation paper on. And the sublimation paper settings are different, so we have to make sure we change our machine. And the sublimation paper settings are 390 for the low temp, 400 for the high temp, and 60 seconds. So you got to change those so that everything sets up properly. Okay, and this is what we're going to end up with. Let's stick that back in the right way. And then you might want to use a pot holder because these are going to be 400 degrees hot. But this is the reveal on that is what you end up with. They cool down fairly quick too, so they're not. And that's our last one right there. So that's our, our pieces, which come out really nice. Right. So this image was generated in Design Finds AI Make. And what I want to do is I want to make this a picture frame that this is cut out of after I sublimate it. So in order to do that, I'm going to take this image and I want this cut out. I'm going to take and I'm going to put a rectangle right in here, right to the edge like that, right? Ah, it moved on me. So let's unlock that, slide that over. And then we want to edit this so all of our spikes are cut out. So in order to do that, we're going to go into edit. We're going to zoom in and we're going to take, we're going to add a point right there. We're going to add another one and pull that out like that and pull that out like that. And we're just going to follow this whole thing so that all the horns are separate or traced, basically not separate, but traced. So we're going to trace every one of these horns and we're going to pull them out a little couple extra points so that we get whole thing and 
just keep going around making new points and scroll down here and it's time consuming but I tried doing it with trace and that took a lot more time this is actually quite a bit faster all right so that's that side I'm going to zoom out we're going to go over this side and we're just going to do the same thing basically follow the contours And once you get it, you can tweak extra points in if you want to make it look a little nicer. And we're almost done. And then when you're done, you just want to convert this over to a different color. I usually use red for cut, so I'll make this red. And then the blue will be basically the image that you can used for reference when you're setting this up and we'll show how to do that in a minute here too and when you're printing this out on your sublimation paper you're going to have to get it printed out on something that will print other than x tools xcs so you're going to have to have some sort of program for that and what I use is I use Adobe Illustrator but you can use I you can use Inkscapes we'll go into that in a minute here so that's our whole trace out now that's traced out our image for a nice cut so we're gonna take that and we're gonna move that to red and then we're gonna take and we're gonna put a rectangle around the whole thing in red and that'll cut the whole image out and we'll make sure that everything falls in which looks good so that is our whole setup right there ready to cut and then when we get our sublimation done we'll take our piece put it in the laser and we'll line it up and then we'll cut it out and that is that part of it okay so this is our picture frame sublimated let's see what she looks like and that is our sublimated picture frame. So I hope this video was helpful. On our picture frame here, the one thing you have to remember is that you have to reverse this image. So you have to flip it horizontally because this skull is actually on this side when you sublimate it. On everything you sublimate, it's gonna be backwards. So everything's gotta be reversed. It's one of the things I forget every once in a while and a waste of material. So just remember to do that. And then what I'm using for the laminating are these laminating pouches. The laminating pouches are, it's basically a pouch and you have to find it, split it, and then just pull it apart. So basically you take these, you find the seam, find where they split, which isn't always easy. But you get it just like that. You just want to tear that off and there's your two pieces. I will put a link to these in the comments for where we get these. And we also use the A sub sublimation paper and I'll put a link to that for where we get that too. And I hope this video helped you, and my next video is coming out. If you have suggestions, something you'd like to see, I'll do what I can. Thanks.